and we watch the the engine market in general. I mean, we always have, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there, but we don't ever want to be on the bleeding edge of a new engine. <laughs> now, maybe a future design, um, you know, if we ever do design something that can accommodate a certified engine. There is no one size fits all airplane. And uh, we've always designed them smaller to protect power loading so that you have really good performance on smaller and, and less expensive engines. Uh, you know, our kits, in terms of the base prices of our kits, they're not all that far off of uh, the pricing of Vans kits, but the secret sauce is the, that you don't have to add a lot more expensive stuff to mm -hmm. it to finish it. And whether that be tools or, um, or engines, mm -hmm. um, you know, people ask us all the time and they've asked certainly with the highway announcement, you know, well, you know, especially with Mosaic coming down the pipe with expanded LSA rules, well, are you going to make it even bigger than 1,320 pounds? Are you going to make it so that we can put continentals and icons and, and, you know, the answer to that is no, um, because it just drives so much in the design of the airplane to put that, mm -hmm. put those big motors in. One, they're not that much more horsepower. Uh, and in some cases, you know, depending on which engine you choose, it's less than what's available yeah. with a Jabber 3300 or 130 horsepower you know, power engine. And um, they're heavy. I mean, you're, so for mm -hmm. power to weight, you've got a much different ratio. Mm -hmm. They're really heavy. They got to swing a really long prop, which means our gear has to get taller, which means that our tail draggers get more difficult to fly mm -hmm. with a taller main gear. Um, so it just isn't part of our formula and it's certainly a cost driver, a major cost driver. Yeah. Uh, even if you get a used engine, um, that, you know, still has some time before overhaul, um, you know, everything, all the money you have to spend to, to, to buy it, to install it properly, to maintain it, um, is far more than the cost of uh, these smaller, oh, yeah. Yeah. newer generation engines that we've been using for the last 20 years. And um, that's still a major part of the formula that, that keeps it affordable, uh, but while at the same time retaining the performance. And we watch the, the engine market in general. I mean, we always have. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there, but we don't ever want to be on the bleeding edge of a new engine. <laughs> um, and so, you know, things like, well, the D motor, for example, is a really intriguing engine. Um, certainly anything lightweight turbo diesel is really mm -hmm. interesting, especially for our unmanned market, because um, there's always a demand to be able to burn jet A for, uh, mm -hmm. for those unmanned vehicles. But, you know, we're just, we're still waiting. Um, mm -hmm. It just isn't that much that's, that's really quite real, at least yeah. not yet. Yeah, I mean, Yamaha threw their hat in the ring recently saying they were going to produce an aircraft engine, but how long is it going to take to prove it out? I mean... The Yamaha name, I, I would tend to trust it, but you, you still have to go through that process. You know? oh, of course. And what is it going to cost? You know, you have a <laughs> box factor like that building an aircraft engine. I can pretty much guarantee it's not going to be any cheaper than a low tax uh, yeah. or a UL power engine. Of course, we'd always like to see these things cost less, but that just isn't reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the the most cost effective option for any of the Sonics right now is the Aero V or Aero V Turbo. And uh, I know there's a lot of uh, excitement around the aero momentums now. They look really cool. I haven't done the research myself yet. I know a few guys are doing it. Um, what are your thoughts on the aero momentum? Well, you know, it's kind of our thoughts on that goes go, that goes down a couple of different tangents. You know, one, um, our thoughts on that are related to our thoughts on the Rotex 912s and that. If you follow Sonic's great length of time, even though we offer Rotex motor mounts, it's still not our favorite choice because of the reduction gear, um, water cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just a lot of complications to the system, uh, a lot of components to the system, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, more numerous failure points. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, we we're always been a uh, you know air cooled direct drive down and dirty kind of fans. <laughs> keeping everything under the pilot's mechanical control. You know, for instance, when it's, you know, start talking about FADEC and mm -hmm. fuel injection um, and, uh, you know, just not having the, uh, the extra complications of, um, of a gearbox or, or a belt drive system and maintenance that's involved with those. 
Um, you know, it works. I mean, there's no question the Rotex engines are incredibly prolific. Which is why we decided to just, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. And we want, why wouldn't we make motor mounts for those? We want to sell airframes as many as we can. And, yeah, yeah. And why the airplane extremely well. And there are customers out there with installations very successful. So when it comes to things like the Aero Momentum um, and, and, and their competitor, um, you know, the other thing we look at is, well, one, the shape of the engine. Man, it's, it's a, really difficult engine to cowl mm -hmm. um, and, and to have it look at all decent. I mean, that's something we struggle with the road, with the Rotaxes as well. You know, you'll see that um, any Rotax installation that we have any part in it isn't going to have a big radiator flat plate drag right underneath mm -hmm. the prop mm -hmm. sticking out in front. Mm -hmm. And we feel the same way with those Honda derivatives. Um, you know, you want everything to be nice and streamlined. Yeah. Um, Obviously, with the, the Honda derivatives, you're going to be um, talking about a completely different cowling, which is a major, you know, that's a major investment for us, just like any tooling. Yeah, the, the mold. Um, that's why you're, you're not going to see a cowling from us for, for the aero momentum, probably ever, um, may, at least not for a very long time. The, the, big, the other big holdback, the reason why I say you probably won't see one ever, is because although you can make it work, it is, it is technically too heavy. Um, okay. You cannot get those Honda derivative engines installed with all of their um, accessories and coolant and stay within the 200 pound fire with the full weight limit that we have. Okay. So, you know, the same is true of the Corvair. And a lot mm -hmm. of people have installed Corvairs and Sonics successfully, but it does take a rearrangement of equipment or some really limiting compromises when it comes to how you fuel up and how you build the airplane with passengers and baggage. So those are all, um, you know, things that can't be ignored. That's, you know, physics and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. basic stuff that um, all these rules that always apply. So um, without a change to the aircraft design itself, um, we can't, you know, the, the air momentum just really isn't uh, especially well suited for the airplane. And that doesn't mean that people can't make them work. Again, yeah. just like for theirs and the people that have done Honda uh, installations in the past. I mean, you know, certainly, but um, as a company, and as designers, uh, we're not going to spend any time um, mm -hmm. working on installation of an engine that just uh, by its basics um, just doesn't fit the box, doesn't fit the weight mm -hmm. that we need for, for the airplane. Now, maybe a future design, um, you know, if we ever do design something that can accommodate a certified engine, uh, in the future, um, you know, maybe that'll be an opportunity for some of the heavier alternative engines. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right for now, um, it's just not not something we're into. No, no, cool. No, and it's that's definitely that's all part of the Sonics philosophy is keep it as simple as possible and cost effective as possible. And like like you said, you add all these extra systems and you add more failure points. You know, it's not it's not that they're bad, but it's just it's more things to consider. Right, and and then so when you're when you're adding those extra systems, well, how how proven is are those systems? Right. right. So you know, for instance, we didn't offer UL power motor mounts until the engine had been around for a really really long time. They had what we're done to see their ECU system, things like that. Um, with uh, the Rotax stuff, I mean, like I said, they're so prolific. They've got many many tens of thousands of fleet hours worldwide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that lends some credibility, some, some implied reliability. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a little more confidence in supporting it. Um, something that's, you know, a smaller organization, you know, doing a conversion that has all these systems, especially electronic systems, mm -hmm. um, that gives us pause because we know that the, the fleet numbers are just smaller. And so the effective uh, experience in fleet uh, and testing and things are going to be on a much smaller scale. And that's mm -hmm. not saying a bad thing about any of those vendors. It's just a really helpful situation. It's like with us with the Aero View. You know, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of them. I mean, I, I fully half of the flying Sonic fleet worldwide is either Aero V or Jabber 3300 because yeah, those are yeah. provided support for first and day one. Um, but again, the Aero V is a, is a fully mechanical system where you, the pilot has to do that control over, over the engine. 
yeah, we, that, that was cool, man. We actually uh, got a little more in depth on the engines and the design than I, than I expected. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry if I go off on tangents. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs>